It is July 26, 2024. My friend and I went to Circle Restaurant in Deerfield. We're there about 6.30 to 7.30. We first go in, okay, some middle-aged white guys in polo shirts are standing by the register. There is a camera, okay? And they're off to the side. Will said he's gonna say he was in a home before and he's gonna verify she was weird with herself. And we looked it up with what she was saying where that recruiter offered to pay a fine or bail. We found out it was a recruiter for a basketball team. Oh, I knew that. They came up and told me who it was. And he started walking around the mall. Um, brought some basketball players, some football players that wanted to take care of these people if they showed up. That he told people it was wrong for a church to kill anybody. Oh, and those drug dealers, and we'll find out who it is, we'll take care of them. If you don't know who the hell you're messing with, his connections into football players. Seven foot basketball players. You don't understand who you would be messing with. You want a football team to cut a carrier? Those giant basketball players? You don't want to threaten that man. You don't know who you would be playing with. And we're going to put it this way. The police already documented it, so Photoshop and showers in. Hmm? And like Officer Reinhardt in Louisville, where I saw him about the shower scene and the other one started giggling. I told him I had bruises. I couldn't explain throwing up, heart racing, almost passing out, da da. And they said that they, where I was going to the doctor, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't see or talk to anybody. He, uh, they, they documented. I had all the signs of being drunk, being raped. And he said, I don't care what they say they got. I don't care what they say they did. Until that agent agreed to protect you, had statements of threat of life, even the FBI would go to jail for being in your home. It's illegal to look and listen. Okay? That's what the Stark County Prosecutor's Office is a fraud scheme. They made the biggest mistake. They did it in your home. It's the Fourth Amendment over the house. No one can be in your home. Dave can't hire anybody on his home. No, not even the FBI can be in your home. It's entrapment if police or agencies do it outside of protected like his statements. They made the biggest mistake they did in your home. Where you had bruises you couldn't explain, throwing up, heart raising, almost passing out in front of people in the personal affection, you probably were being drug being raped. You had all the signs of it never seen anybody and they probably were drugging up until you say something stupid so you wouldn't remember. In photoshopping in a shower scene, the other room's clicking and pasting. It's a fraud scheme. Took them 30 seconds. Huh? Talk to police all this area. And I'll tell you what, they want to know if our local police were slow. That they, everything's digital. You can put on somebody else's head on somebody else's body. You can change their eye color, hair color. Take words out of sentences, other sentences, retape over it so it looks like you're saying something you didn't. They can change your clothes, they can put a shower scene in another room. Dear God, they can put it in a different country. They can put different clothes on you so you have the actions of washing with clothes on. They could put your head on somebody else. We all know this. And that nothing's been trustworthy for years and day rape drug enables your drugs your sleep walking. For four to six hours, they call them mind-controlling drugs. They've known about them for years and years. Now, and other police officers out of this area swearing these people pulling off what fucking shit. Nobody could be in their home. Now, in March of 22, I went to work with this client in a bar. The next door neighbor, they called them the first day. Pete ordered everything to be drugged, photoshopped, and made up on her. Well, she talked to the camera behind in the place. My car's parked from that case. They already heard it. Okay. 
March 1st to 3rd of 21, they said they put two clips together, put her in a porn. It's not her, it's them. And they're so far altered, March 13, 21. They told the nurse at Mercy Medical the only thing they had, John, was adjusting herself. The guy said that's sick. I said, no, she simply wiped off water with clothes on. He said that's sick. I said, no, she just brushed it off. Okay. Then they start saying, you touched yourself, you exposed yourself, you touched yourself, look what. That's not wiping off water with clothes on. I pooped off blood for days. My stomach was so upset. It's like you did what else to me? And then I thought they're playing me. They put my head on somebody else's body. It's Photoshop. It's clips together. Then you got to think, what would you be doing? You touch yourself, expose yourself, you're undressing. You touch yourself weird, but not weird. You can be putting yeast infection cream on. To get undressing in the shower, you're washing yourself. It sounds like showering. I walked outside the smoke. She figured out what they did. May 12, 22 at noon. They're screaming at the drug dealers driving by. We found a tape of those boys emitting a shower scene in the other room. May 26, 22 at noon. They sent an attorney order everything to be, uh, that shower scene to be photoshopped to make you look weird. Who did they say ordered it? In March of 22? He. Who did Dave tell Danny he hired on his own? Pete. Get it? January of 22, a ladies group from Ravenna came out. And they said we made a big mistake being in her home. Oh, you get life in federal for this, honey. Said when she wiped off the water, she went straight down. She didn't expose herself as if anybody would care about this. And she's never said she did anything wrong before. And when she wiped off that water, she went straight down and didn't expose herself as if anybody would care about that. And those people raped her. Get it? March 24, 22, 1-1-30, they admitted a frame of me. Got a witness on that. May 25th, 21, 6 p.m., Wendy's in Louisville. They were talking, the crew was talking about the church people breaking in before a drug me told me they were going to lost or stuff. I got two witnesses in my phone. 8, 9, 21, the apartment building for me, second close to the fence. A lady and little girls up there, and they're outside talking about it. Four or five neighbors got together, did a police report. 1295 Barrel, a little white lady, she screamed at him for doing it and then talked to several uh, people in 21. November 1st, 3rd of 21, and save a lot of an African American lady thought out everything was them and not me and they made everything up on me and she's telling people to stay out of it. And at the Oakland apartment, December 9, 21, 4 p.m., they told him all the tapes before were them and not her. And um, it's just a bunch of men doing crimes down here. December 9, 21, white man ball with dark eyes distributing food at the Stark County Hunger Task Force on 9th Street was one of my guards. He came out and said, we always knew the tapes were for were them and not her, so we never said a word. By Christmas of 21, there was investigators in there when we went back, um, and they came out and said, it's some guy named Eric trying to help him get away with this. We don't know who he is yet, okay? Ed told the maintenance man that worked with him, his African American, said, no, this is funny, she's scared to death of those people. They tortured me, they crushed my skull in. They human trafficked me, they tried to shoot me driving. They've killed people around me, yeah, I'm scared of them. Okay? And uh, Ed told him, said, I already told him. Someone called me and told me that all the tapes before were them and not her. And it's just a bunch of men doing crimes here. And they said that that's what the guy at the Hunger Task Force said. He knew about that. So they have to talk to him. Okay. January 19th, 22, Department of Disability. They told them at 11 o'clock in the morning. I was drugged and told to say it before. February 2nd, 22, Burlington Co. Factory. A Latino man came up with his girlfriend. I see her. She said, I see her out today. It's not funny what's going on. He said, I know. I wish I went and drugged her first and told her to say it. I got my client away from her. I, we went outside. He said, I heard that Latino guy 
say he drugged you first. I told you, say, I said, I only had bruises and I was sick and I never talked to anybody. I'll tell the police where to look for him. Okay? Well, we go and say a lot. People are running and screaming. Oh my goodness, they met at a drug and are tell her I say it before. Took him back to his apartment. The brown house across the way ran out and yelled at the postman. The postman was like, we all heard it. An investigator from Ravenna drives a black Sebring. He pulled up next to the apartment and said, I seen her out today. I found out that bastard really did drug her and tell her to say it before. Eric made fun of everybody November 18th, 22. Um, Walmart 62. All the tapes before were me and not her. It was my idea to come up with it. My idea to do it. My idea to say For all these people turn on, they thought we're ha ha. Said if it's only you, I could take care of it. And I was like, that nice down for it. November 24th, 22, the nurse taking care of me at Mercy Medical Emergency Room. I had food poison. I was talking to Lady Canton office. Said we all heard that Eric made fun of us for falling for this. Nobody better say a word again. Beginning of 23, Dave told Danny he hired Pete on his own. It was Pete doing it. June 7th, 23, Lighthouse Tabernacle makes fun of FBI Agent John. FBI Agent John fell for the stunt of tapes before. Oh, come on now. It was only a stunt. They were having me drug beat, marked, photoshopped, and exploded on the internet. It was only a stunt. Selling kitty porn to my grandkids' spawn party is only a stunt. You gotta be kidding. Oh, come on now, that FBI agent actually fell for it. You mean John actually fell for it. Is that what's going on? FBI agent John fell for the stun of tapes before. Ha, 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 ha. And cackle and cackle at him. Star County Sheriff's has their confession. July 9th, 23, Trinity Gospel Temple. You're in there. The FBI wouldn't dare fix this after what one of their agents did. Mm-hmm. What was it? Was it March 20th, 24, Walmart 62? They admitted they made up Pete. They made up everything on me to get away with this. Or they said made up retired Judge Pete. There's a drug dealer named Pete. But they made up retired Judge Pete. And they made up everything on me to get away with this. There's a drug dealer named Pete. He's one of the federal king's men. He confessed July 8th, 24, in Altman Hospital Billing Department. The lady calls me and trying to say my debit card wasn't working. I just used it at McDonald's. And you could hear him confess. I called. I ordered those men to come here. I paid for them to show up here. I paid for them to do everything to her. I paid for all those people to do all those things to her. And I paid people to follow her around and say and do stuff to her. What did you just say, bitch? And then he said, we all know she only carried a gun because Dave was controlling. Thank you for implicating Dave. Now the police went, Dave was big into uh, concealed carries and shooting I can shoot a gun, and I can take one apart and clean it. I don't like guns. It's not that I can't shoot one, and it's not that I can't take one apart and clean it. I made sure I have useless information in my head. But I have a concealed carry purse. I wouldn't put my clip in the gun 90% of the time. And it was in a different compartment. Those things are dangerous. Police would come up to me, uh, you don't have it in you to shoot anyone, that's why you won't carry a clip in a gun. Karen doesn't have it in her to hurt anyone. That idiot in there is, I made sure she could never carry a gun again. We only know she carried one because they was controlling and when she finds out what's going on, I don't have to worry about her shooting people. 
Now, what did the police say? She doesn't have it in her other shoe somewhere. Karen doesn't have it in her to hurt anyone. They were never worried about me. But thank you for your compassion. Like people said, that drug de that old drug dealer confessed. He's telling he was the one that was impersonating a retired drug dealer. He was an impersonating an attorney, an investigator, and now he is impersonating an FBI agent. Well, And he's a federal kingsman. For we all work for the king from Texas. We are his men. He sent us here to help. He saw us doing it. Dave hired us. He's a drug lord. King from Texas is a U.S. military Iraqi translator. Went into the dark web. There's real people, if you look them up, how they describe themselves. That's where the Middle Eastern men lay in jobs. Hmm? Officer Mark in August of 23 on a Tuesday was talking to a lady real loud in Coles parking lot. He said, none of this is funny. She said, did her ex-husband defend her? He said, yes, we take them. So did I. Okay. So did anybody ever talk to her? He said, no. Then they had to have framed her before. He said, it's documented and verified. She was framed before. She said, was it the drug cartel? Yes, we've seen them. So who's Pete? The drug cartel. It's also been documented and verified it was a medication error that made her sick before. And it's documented and verified another woman was using her insurance. Half my radical records are hers. She stayed in the hospital, went hair carry on my insurance for 15 years. And the factory told Dave if he wouldn't have gave her my insurance information, there's no way she would have got it. He was probably cheating on me where he's saying some crazy woman took my insurance. Found out she had two little girls. It was probably one of his baby mamas. She stayed in the hospital, seeing doctors I've never heard of. Ran up three thousand dollar bills, two thousand, twelve hundred, seven hundred, you name it. I get all kinds of bills. We try to report insurance fraud at the factory and Kay McMillan, is she still alive? My God, will she read you about Dave? My brother knew her, my mom knew this lady. I would get all kinds of bills and we call them up and tell them that, you know, it wasn't me. I've never been to this doctor's office. I've never been here. I've never stayed there. Wasn't, you know, and they're like, well, this is your information. You didn't have to show ID back then. It was, what, 2001? Um, I got a phone call. We want to stay, talk about your stay in the hospital. I said I'm going to stay in the hospital in a year or two. At least. They said, you see doctors, so-and-so. I said, I never heard of them. And I tell them about this lady using my insurance. She's like, well, we sat and talked. You said you have two little girls. I said, ma'am, I have three stinky boys. Well, your girls are their name are this. I said, mine are John, Josh, and Dan. And they're boys. So I tried to tell you, some lady's been using my insurance for... Or was it 13, 15 years? And I said, she keeps running up bills. And she said, is your information this uh, for the insurance? And I said, yes. And she said, well, let me put it this way. You're responsible for the copay, but. Dave, Kay McMillan told Dave there's no way that lady could have got it unless he gave it to her. And he's saying, Karen, she had to steal it. She had to get it out of your purse or something. He was probably cheating. He wasn't probably staying at work like he didn't do it this time. He gets paid time off and cheat on me. Freak. But yeah, everybody knew about that lady. 
My dad gave Dave a job at Midwest Harbor in 86 because I was pregnant with Josh. And within a year, we started getting all these fraudulent bills. And it kept it up and kept it up and kept it up. And she ran up tens of thousand dollars worth of bills. Half my medical records are hers. That's where Officer Mark said it's been documented and verified. Another woman was using her insurance. Now, if you want a couple of the middle-aged white men polo shirts standing by the register at Circle Restaurant in Deerfield, we are there probably 6, 37, 30. We go in and sit down and they're ramping how Will's going to lie for him. That he was in there. He was, you know, like people said, Will don't ever want to say he was in her home before with those drug dealers. Because then he was one of the ones drug being with him and setting up the whole scam. On a recorded line, he makes fun of me for Pete's tapes. And he calls them Pete's tapes. He didn't say his, he said Pete's tapes. And I didn't know what he was talking about because it's photoshopped and drugged. But who does Pete work for? An Iraqi terrorist on U.S. soil selling women and children and selling fentanyl. Pete is a human trafficker. This is the biggest drug scam in the world. The drug cartel is trying to prove to everybody around here that they can get in your home. They can stalk you and, and that cyber stalking is legal. That they can sell kitty porn of your children, your grandchildren on the internet. And that can get away with them. They want to tell you they can take naked pictures of you showering with your, or in bed with your partner, go in the bathroom. You have no rights. That is not sextortion, voyeurism. That they can photoshop a shower scene and draw cartel tapes in a drug scam. In another room, they can break in and stab you with a date rape drug, beat and rape you. You wake up and you don't know what happened to you, you've been throwing up, heart racing, almost passing out, and a severe personal infection. I'm blaming the well water, but it was dirty before we got the water treatment system just showering in it. And I thought I had cancer with having all those bruises. And the doctor's probably thinking I got some kind of weird violence. And here, it's a drug dealer, drug beating me and drugging me up. So, like, you sleepwalking like you do with LSD and all, all kinds of drugs. There's over 20 that will make you sleepwalk. And they, they, even prescription ones in high doses. I've actually met somebody that was a roofie, had no idea how they got home. My neighbor of mine came up to me. I went out of my apartment to smoke one morning. Walks up to me, I don't know how I got home. I'm like, go sleep well. He's like, you don't understand, I've been sitting there for hours. What do you remember the second beer? Go sleep it all. He's like, you don't understand. I don't know how I got home. He said, I got $80 in my pocket. I'm like, you better check your bank. He did what I told him to. It's like, well, I took a hundred out, but what was in the box with mustard? And how did I change my shoes? Um, he lost the whole night. And I'll sleep on here. I'm a full sleeper. He looked at me, well, I used to be a New York cop and you're pretty. I'm like, you need to sleep that long. He's like, you want to go cuddle? I'm like, go sleep it all. I could have told him to say or do anything and he would never remember. My co-worker dog was taken uh, from a bar and left Willing with him and don't even remember meeting them. Mm -hmm. And was left raped out in the parking lot in a puddle of pee. 
I met a U.S. Marshals kid, took one drink, the room went dizzy and black. In a bar in Jersey's bar in Canada. She don't even know what happened to her on that night. And another night, she went back out. She took the one drink and she ended up in the hospital. Don't even know how she got out of the bar. I said, you're sleepwalking with those roofies. She said, I know that. I talked to a criminal attorney. He knew it too. So did the sheriff's office area. And we all know about those amnesia drugs. You're sleepwalking. We call them mind-controlling drugs. They can control anything you say and do for hours. I never had these people in my home. I never talked to them before that we had. When people say, when you realize she'd never seen or talked to anybody, the tape script will become very not funny. Where would you think drug dealers harming people in their home? Funny, funny as can. You act like all these crimes they did are legal. They're so outrageous, legal. Rico charges, racketeering, is drugs, kidnapping, okay? Threats, and attempt extortion on them and rape. What did they do? Racketeering. Selling kitty porn. Human traffic me under drugs. I had orange, lemon, grapefruit sized bruises all over me. My muscles killing me. My head is pounding. Almost passing out in a severe swollen personal fiction until I couldn't hardly pee. That pee is dangerous and he is a serial rapist. 